Welcome to the presentation, categorization of faulty loss misuse resistance message authentication. I'm the speaker, Yulong Chen. This paper was co-authored with Bashtanik and Bashtanik. The story of non-space MAC algorithms starts with the work of Reshma and Carter in 1981, where they process the message with universal hash function and the input modes with the function f. And then they XOR the output of the universal hash function with the output of the function f and to generate the output tag of the construction. Their work is built on the early work of Gilbert, McWillans, and Sloan in 1974. We can show that if f is a secure PIF, then the resulting construction achieves and bit security. However, there are two concerns about these constructions. The first one is that there are not so many well-analyzed dedicated PIFs in the world. So usually we choose to implement F as a block cipher. In that case, the resulting construction is called the Wehman Carter superconstruction, which achieves n divided by two bits burst and bond security. The second concern is that um, the construction strictly depends on the input nodes. In the case of a single nodes repetition, the construction is totally broken. In order to solve the above mentioned problem, Buchliadi and Serena introduced in 2016 the construction encrypted Wehman Carter with Davis Mann. They show that the construction achieves 2 n divided by 3 bit security in the non respecting setting and still birthday bond security in the case of non misuse setting. One year later, Manning and Navis shows that EWCDM actually achieve, achieved n bit security in the non respecting setting, but their proof is based on open, their proof is based on an unverified version of the new theory. Again, one year later, Nada et al. proposed the following construction DWCDM, where D means for decrypted. Instead of um, using an independent key in the second block cipher call of EWCDM, DWCDM uses inverse of the block cipher call, but based on the same key as the first one. Both CWCDM and DWCDM has the property that, in the case of a non repetition, the security drops to the birthday bond. In order to improve the security, the et al. introduced the following construction in 2019. This construction is the non space variant of EHTM by Minamatsu in 2010. In order to prove the security of this construction, Luta et al. introduced the faulty nonce model, where they call a very faulty if it's a Mac query that uses the repeated nonce. What's interesting about the construction is the construction achieves actually something that we call graceful security degradation. That means that in the case of nonce repetition, the security of this construction will not immediately drop to the birthday bond. However, the construction will drop with the, um, with the function that's, um, that depends on the number of faulty queries. So the authors show that the different construction achieves 2n defined by 3 bit security if the number of faulty queries is below 2 to the power n divided by 3. One year later, Troy et al. improved the security and they show that actually this construction achieved 3 n divided by 4 bit security if the number of faulty queries is below 2 to the power 3 n divided by 8. We see that both EWCDM and this non spaced EHTM construction um, uses two 
a two block cipher calls and why you reverse a hash function at variation. We wonder whether we can build a construction with the same cost but achieve a similar or better security. Before we give an answer to this question, we first want to define the security definition that was used in this work. We focus on PRF security, so we define an attack game. At the beginning of the game, one of the two worlds is chosen. The real world on the left side, and the ideal world on the right side. The construction um, the oracle in the real world is um, our construction, which is fx, while the ideal world oracle is the random function. So the adversary A makes Q queries to the given oracle. And we ask that A will not repeat its query since by asking the same inputs, it will get the same output. And after A's communication with the oracle, it should state which of the two worlds it was given access to. If A cannot do so, then we can deduce that the given cross section is a secure PIF. We will first start with the simple result. We want to build all end to end bit PIFs with just using two block cipher calls. On the framework shown in this slide, we can see there are in total 2 to the power 6 constructions that can be built. However, many of those are just trivially insecure. The following four requirements are needed to guarantee the security of the construction. For example, if A11 is not equal to 1, then there's no inputs to the first block cipher. If A33 is not equal to 1, then the output of the second block cipher doesn't have influence on the construction. If the sum of A22 and A32 are not, um, must be at least 1, then yeah, the, um, the, out the output of the first block cipher doesn't have influence on the construction. Same as before, A21 plus A22 must be at least 1, because otherwise there's no input to the second block cipher. So keep in mind that we are only interested in beyond birthday but secure PIFs. With those information in mind, we are able to drive the following not so surprisingly results. The only construction that we can build on two block cipher calls the soft permutation construction by Bellale et al. in 1998, the encrypted Davis Mayer construction by Gorghiati and Serain in 2016, and the encrypted Davis Mayer dual construction by Menning and Nevis in 2017. Um, those are the constructions that I already know um, in, the in the previous work. And, um, they are actually shown to achieve embed security in the um, embed security in um, besides those constructions, there are natural dual variants which uh, we can obtain by XORing the inputs to the outputs also achieve the same amount of security. Now, based on those information. We are able to get one step farther and go to the design of non based MAC algorithms. Now we try to build MAC algorithms using two block cipher calls and one universal hash function evaluation. We see the framework in the slides that we evaluate the message um, using universal hash function and um, puts the output of the universal hash function. XOR, it's, um, yeah, the outputs can be XOR at any moment of the, uh, of the construction. So there are in total 2 to the power 9 constructions that can be built. However, as before, many of those constructions are trivially insecure. Besides the um, previously mentioned four conditions, we also 
required that at least one of that B values must be one because otherwise um, the output of the uh, universe of hash is not XOR to the construction. So after our analysis, it seems that there are a total of 10 interesting constructions left. There are five of those are based on EDM, three are based on SOP, and two of those are based on EDM. Um, in this slide, I will show you the three of those 10 constructions, where the trees are the special Rehman Carter constructions that are based on SOP, EDM, and EDMD, respectively. As mentioned before, Rehman Carter constructions have ended security in the case of non respecting setting, but are totally broken in the case of single nonce reuse. So what remains over are the seven constructions, where four are based on EDM, two are based on SOP, and the last one is based on EDMD. We'll, start, we'll first start with constructions based on EDM. Those two constructions based on EDM are EWCDM and the variant of EWCDM. We can show that those two constructions achieve 3 and divided by 4 bit security in the most respecting setting. And this time we can prove the security with a concrete verifiable proof. Uh, unfortunately, the constructions do not enjoy graceful security degradation. That means that in the case of a single noise repetition, the security of the constructions drops to um, n divided by 2 bits per second. The following two constructions based on EDM which is much more interesting um, because they achieve 3 and divided by 4 bit security as long as the number of 40 queries is below 2 to the power n divided by 2, which is actually, um, uh, that actually means that the constructions do enjoy graceful security degradation. The following two constructions based on SOP are the non space variant of EHTM and the variant of this. Um, we can show that those constructions achieve 3 and divided by 4 bit security as long as the number of 40 queries is below 2 to the power 3 and divided by 8. They both also enjoy graceful security degradation. The last construction is the one based on EDMD. This is a very special construction since we don't, yeah, out, the output of the first block cipher is not known. Because of this reason, it makes outputs of the second block cipher also unknown. Since the second block cipher and output, the output of the second block cipher is equal to the XOR of the output of the first block cipher with uh, an output tweak T, and we only know the value of T. Because of those reasons, it makes it impossible to apply currently known techniques such as mu theory um, to prove the beyond first about security of the construction in the non respecting setting. That's the reason why we will leave it for, uh, as an open question for the future research. I still want to say something about our security analysis. In this work, we use the Batrans mute and Batrans edge coefficient technique. The technique is actually um, formalized in the slide. I'm not going to explain it in detail, but I just want to say in this work, we use the Batrans mute theory to obtain this epsilon, and we can apply Batrans mute theory by transforming the trans and the query transcripts into a transcript graph where the graph should satisfy the following properties. The first one is that the graph shouldn't contain any circles and the graph shouldn't contain any serial path labels. Um, while using the above two mesh properties, we are able to define the bad, the bad events and then we can bounce probability that the bad events 
happens in the uh, happen in the ideal world. In the following slides, we um, you see a table that summarizes the four and the ten constructions, and we can see that the most interesting one are the six constructions with three and defined by four bit security. The first two constructions based on EDM, that's B2 and B3 construction. Um, from the previous work, we already know that those constructions can be optimal and bit secure. The main reason that we only have three and five by four bit security is because, uh, because of the limitation of the near theory. So we hope that the security can be of those two constructions can be improved in the future using an improved version of near theory or by using some other stronger proof technique. The other four constructions are the most interesting ones since they all enjoy risk for security degradation. Those constructions are and also shown in this slide where the first two are based on EDM and are serial constructions and it's uh, um, the related to uh, actually parallel, parallel constructions based on SOP. Those four constructions all achieve 3 and 4 bit security. We are not aware whether this 3 and 4 bit security is tight or not. That's because of the presence of the alternating an alternating path of longer length in the transcript graph. So I will just leave it as an open question for the future research. For conclusion, in this work, we perform an exhaustive search of all PRFs that can be built by two book cycle calls. Based on this result, we perform an exhaustive search for MAC algorithms that can we built fun one universal hash evaluation at two block cycle calls. After that, we perform a beyond birthday bond PRF security analysis of the constructions in the 40 nonce model. For the future, as already mentioned before, it will be very interesting to look at the tightness of the security bond. One of the research topics that can be done is to prove the beyond birthday bond security of that smack algorithm that was based on EDMB in the most respecting setting. And since our analysis was done for the PRF security only, it will also be very interesting to look at the max security of the given constructions. So this is the end of my presentation. I want to thank you for your attention.